Welcome again to Devotion and Prayer with the devotional Maranatha, the Lord is Coming by Ellen G. White. Today's reading is January the 23rd, Intolerance and Persecution. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. John 15 verse 20. Persecution in its varied forms is the development of a principle which will exist as long as Satan exists and Christianity has vital power. No man can serve God without enlisting against himself the opposition of the host of darkness. Evil angels will assail him, alarm that his influence is taking the prey from their hands. Evil men, rebuked by his example, will unite with them in seeking to separate him from God by alluring temptations. When these do not succeed, then a compelling power is employed to force the conscience. But so long as Jesus remains man's intercessor in the sanctuary above, the restraining influence of the Holy Spirit is felt by rulers and people. It still controls to some extent the laws of the land. Were it not for these laws, the condition of the world would be much worse than it is now. While many of our rulers are active agents of Satan, God also has his agents moving upon the leading men of the nation. The enemy moves upon his servants to, to propose measures that would greatly impede the work of God, but statesmen who fear the Lord are influenced by holy angels to oppose such propositions with, an, with unanswerable arguments. Thus a few men will hold in check a powerful current of evil. The opposition of the enemies of truth will be restrained that the third angel's message may do its work. When the final warning shall be given, it will arrest the attention of these leading men through whom the Lord is, not, is now working and some of them will accept it, and will stand with the people of God through the time of trouble. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. Joel 2 verse 23 In the last days, saith God, I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 2 17, 21 the great work of the gospel is not to close with less manifestation of the power of God than marked its opening. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. John 15 verse 20 Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you praising you, thanking you, glorifying you for your word. We praise you for being God, our Lord, our ruler, our sovereign, our King. Christ, our King, our Savior, our Redeemer, the Holy Spirit, our Comforter, our Spirit of Truth, guiding us, directing us, protecting us. And thank you for these heavenly angels. Keep them around us, protect us, create an atmosphere around us, Lord, of peace, of holiness, of heaven. Let us openly admit, Lord, that we are sinners, unworthy, unable to do what you want. But we thank you so much for grace. We thank you so much for the righteousness of Christ. We accept it. Please cover us with his robe of righteousness and fill us with the Holy Spirit. Fill us to the latter rain power to give the loud cry with full strength, Lord. Thank you for the reading. Thank you for the message that one, we are to realize that when we are faithful, when we follow in the footsteps of Christ, persecution is guaranteed. Satan will try to seduce to coerce, to impress us to evil, to sin, as he did Job. But once he realizes that he cannot, the next step is to try to destroy us. So Lord, when we look at ourselves, and we look at our church and realize we know nothing recently as a church 
especially in these div not and in, in the countries like Africa and places like that, China, certain places, they know persecution. But in the Bahamas, in America, we do not know persecution as a church. Individuals would have experienced. But as a church, we are in good times, easy times, because it means our work is ineffective, Lord. Which means it's time for us to wake up. If we're bringing in a crowd of people, and the crowd is coming in, and there is no opposition, there is no fight back from Satan, something is wrong with the crowd that is coming in. Something is wrong with the message that is drawing in that crowd. When we look at Pentecost, 3,000 were baptized. But right after that, we hear of the high priest and persecution saying, Stop preaching in the name of Jesus. The disciples boldly said, Who will we serve, man or God? And they continued to preach, but the persecution ramped up and ramped up and ramped up till they were scattered, but the scattering caused the persecution also caused the gospel to spread. The gospel spreads when there's persecution and people are brought in. If we are doing this work and there is no true opposition, it is proof positive that our work is enfeebled. Our work is weak. Satan is not terrified by our preaching. He's not endangered by our witnessing. Our evangelism does nothing to him, which means because we are still in sin. We can baptize as many as we want, but we're still in sin and no one is coming out of it. So Satan is fine with that. But Lord, wake us up now. Bring us to your truth. Standing firm on your word in its totality. Presenting it clear and distinct. Give us that ability again, Lord. And we claim that promise before. We claim it again now. Help us to do that. And when we do that, Lord, we know what is coming next. Persecution. Persecution will come. But this will purify your church. But Lord, also now we pray for the strength to go through that persecution to stand firm, to have our eyes stayed on Jesus, not on ourselves, not on, I know what's going to happen. No, Lord, help us to keep our eyes stayed on Jesus. Help us to be faithful, trusting, depending on Jesus, depending on the Holy Spirit working in us, your angels to protect us. So help us to hold our feet firm, not in our strength, but fully depending on you. And next, Lord, help us to pray for the government, the leaders of the world. The word says there are countless evil agents in the governments, but there are good men there too. Men who in the end will accept the faith. But I can't point and say this one, this one, this one, because I don't know who will be saved, but you know, Lord. You know who you are working on Impressing their heart with truth. You know who are the agents of Satan. So Lord, help us to pray for our leaders. To pray for them to themselves get in the word. Themselves live the truth out. Themselves study and pray. Themselves humble themselves and pray for your guidance. That when they go before those government meetings, they're not going with pride, which we often see, with self, which we, also, which we often see. They're going trusting in what they just got from you. And thus said the Lord. Send your angels around them, bless them, protect them, and may they hold back these winds that we can give this message out. Satan would be glad to have the message blocked by laws. But Lord, put your lawmakers there, hold them there that we can do this work. Bless these men. Strengthen these men. Help us to constantly pray in America, where I am at, the Bahamas, and wherever there is a true believer. Let them remember to pray for their government, that someone will stand for the truth, so that when Satan wants to knock down the free spreading of the gospel, someone will stop it with unanswerable arguments. Be with our leaders, Lord. They do not know 
what they're facing. They think they're dealing with men, but we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. So, Lord, we really must pray for them. Send them double angels. Send them angels that excel in strength, that they can have backbone, that they can stand firm. They will call sin, sin. And they will stand firm though the heavens fall. Be with our leaders, Lord. In the same way, be with our church leaders, our administrators, our pastors, our elders, even to our Sabbath school leaders, our directors. May they stand firm. And be with all of us, Lord. Help us all to stand firm. Help us to be a pure witness for you. A pure witness for your truth, Lord. For the end is near. Thank you for answering this prayer. And help us to get up fully believing this prayer is being answered and we will see wonderful work. A wonderful work of revival and reformation. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen.